This video is for beginners. It explains how to create pivot tables in Microsoft Excel. When you create a pivot table, you start with a regular spreadsheet like this one. I put a link to this workbook in the description below in case you want to download it and practice later on your own. I made up this data. It's a list of courses taught last year by a training company. It tells us the type of course, this is an Excel course, taught in Houston, 10 students enrolled, and it brought in a revenue of $2,000. If I do not want all this detail, if I only want to see the total revenue amount from all of the Excel courses, another total from all the Power BI courses, and then a total from the PowerPoint courses, the best way to do this is with a pivot table. So let's create one. Select the column headers and all the rows you want to include. Further down, there are some additional rows of data. I do not want to include these, so I do not select them. Now go to the Insert ribbon and click on Pivot Table. Excel has correctly identified the range of data I want to use, and I do want the pivot table to appear on a new worksheet, so I will click OK. Now we have a new worksheet with the pivot table, and our data source remains on the original sheet. This area is a placeholder for the pivot table. I'm going to add a column in front of it and zoom in so that we can see it better. If I click within this area, we have two new ribbon tabs, Design and Pivot Table Analyze. There is also a right-hand panel called Pivot Table Fields. If this panel does not appear, then you can click somewhere in the Pivot Table area, and on the Pivot Table Analyze ribbon, click on Field List. In the right-hand panel, there is a list of fields, Topic, Course Number, Through Revenue. These should look familiar because they are the column headers from the data source. Also on this panel, there are four areas, filters, columns, rows, and values. To add data to the pivot table, we add the fields to one of these areas. In the first field topic, there is a box next to it. I'm going to click on this box. When I do, two things happen. Topic appears in the rows area, and a distinct list of topics appear in the pivot table. So even though in our data source we have 14 Excel courses, in the pivot table, Excel is listed exactly once. That's because the pivot table automatically groups and summarizes the data. Let's go back to the right-hand panel, and this time, check the box next to revenue. Because revenue is a number, the field name appears in the values area. And in the pivot table, we see the sum of revenue by topic, which is exactly the summary that I wanted. We can do a quick check if I add up all the revenue from the Excel courses, it comes to this total. Another way to add data is to click and drag the field with the mouse. If I left mouse click and drag course title to rows, we now have revenue totals by course title, a subtotal for each topic, and a grand total. Pivot tables do allow for some user interaction. I can click the button next to Excel to hide or show the course titles. I can also right mouse click on Excel and go to expand and collapse and collapse the entire field. Or expand the entire field. This first column contains both the topic and the course title. We can change this layout by going to the design ribbon, report layout. The compact form is the layout we are looking at right now. Let's change it to show in outline form. Each field now appears in its own column, so that's a lot easier to work with. In the topic column header, I will click the drop down arrow. I can sort the topics from A to Z, or go to More Sort Options, Descending, and Sort by Sum of Revenue. Click OK. Power BI moves to the top with the highest revenue compared to Excel and PowerPoint. If I sort the course title in the same way, More Sort Options, Descending, Sum of Revenue, the courses are now sorted by revenue within each topic. This layout helps us understand how the data is grouped and sorted, but sometimes you want the pivot table to look more like a regular spreadsheet. On the design tab, if we go back to report layout, we can show this in tabular form. Then fill in the blank rows by going to report layout, repeat all item labels, and then go to subtotals and click do not show subtotals. The pivot table now looks more like a traditional spreadsheet. However, even though we changed the layout, the courses are still grouped by topic, 
and they are still sorted within each topic. If I want to see the courses sorted regardless of the topic, we will need to break them out of the group by moving them to the first column. Go to the right-hand panel, Rows, click and drag the course field above Topic. The course titles now appear in descending order by revenue. Let's also format these revenue numbers. Go to the Values area, Sum of Revenue, click the drop-down arrow, click on Value Field Settings, Number Format. A quicker way to do this is to right mouse click on a number directly in the table and select Number Format. Pivot tables have a variety of built-in calculations that we can use. Back in the data source, Students is a numeric field, so if I drag the Students field to Values, the default calculation is a sum. We see the sum of students. Course Title is a text field. If I drag Course Title to Values, the default calculation for a text field is Count. This tells us how many courses were taught. There is also a Course Number, which is a unique code for each course. Let's try moving Course Number to Values. Because the code is a number, Excel calculates a sum instead of a count. But we can change this calculation. In the right-hand panel, in the Values area, go to Sum of Course Number, click the drop-down arrow, Value Field Settings, and change it from a sum to a count, and now we have our 35 courses. You can also right-mouse click, hover the mouse over Summarize Values By, and change the calculation that way. Let's remove the last three columns with the right-mouse menu. Remove the count of course number, count of course title, and sum of students. The pivot table tells me the total revenue from each course, but I also want to know the percent of total revenue. I will drag another copy of revenue to values, right mouse click in the new column, summarize values by, I will leave as sum, and then go to show values as percent of column total. If you want to change the column header, you can just type over what's there. If you receive an error message saying the field already exists, the trick is to add a space or two at the end of the description. Now we can see that the courses titled Power BI for Beginners actually generated 32% of the total revenue. There are some really cool things you can do with pivot tables. Let's remove the course title and the percent of revenue. So we have topic and rows and revenue and values. Drag the location field to columns. This is a cross-tab report with the categories in both rows and columns. This makes it easy to see that apparently there were no PowerPoint courses taught in Cleveland. Another cool thing you can do is group certain items within one field. Let's switch things up and move location to rows and topic to columns. In our data, when the location of a course is the name of a city, like Boston, that means the course was taught in person in a classroom. I want to compare the total revenue from all the courses taught in a classroom to the revenue from all the courses taught online. For the first step, I'm going to go to Design and make sure the report layout is in outline form. You do not have to do this, but it makes it easier to understand. I'm also going to make sure that the report layout says, do not repeat item labels. Okay, I will select the four cities, Boston, Cleveland, Denver, and Houston, go to the Pivot Table Analyze ribbon, and click on Group Selection. The four cities I had selected are grouped together under Group 1, and Online is grouped as Online. Let's rename Group 1 as Classroom, the column header for this custom group we created is labeled Location 2. And the really cool thing is that in the fields list, we have a new field called Location 2. The new field does not show up in our data source. It only exists in the pivot table. I will rename this field to Delivery Method, which automatically changes the name in the fields list. If I right mouse click on the Delivery Method column and remove it, 
it is still available in the fields list for us to use. So let's also remove location, move topic from columns to rows, and add the new delivery method field to columns. Right mouse click on one of the revenue values, show values as percent of row total. By creating a custom group, I have a new way to analyze the data. And it's very interesting, 64% of the revenue from Excel courses came from courses that were taught in the classroom. If you want to change percentages back to numbers, just right mouse click, show values as, no calculation. And to completely delete a custom group, right mouse click the delivery method field and click ungroup. We now see the individual locations again. They are no longer grouped by classroom and online, and the group name has disappeared from the fields list. I think just the ability to drag categories to both rows and columns make pivot tables very useful when you are working with data. The last thing I want to cover is how to make sure that when you make changes to the data source, the new information appears in the pivot table. For example, if I change the description of Excel to Microsoft Excel, the pivot table does not automatically update. I have to go to the pivot table analyze ribbon and click refresh. Now the new Excel description shows up. There may also be situations when you want to add more records to your data source. For example, you'll remember we did not include these word courses in the pivot table data. Let's move up these first two word courses that have a total revenue of $5,000. On the pivot table worksheet, if I click refresh, I still do not see any word courses. That's because I expanded the range of the data source. I need to go to the pivot table analyze ribbon and click on change data source. Now I can expand the selection to include the two new rows and we see the word courses with $5,000 in revenue. If this does not show up right away, you might need to click refresh one more time. If you are going to be changing your data source often, like maybe adding records once a week, then you can make this process easier by transforming your data source to a table. Let's see how that works. First, I'm going to make a copy of the original spreadsheet because it's not that easy to change from a table back to a spreadsheet. So now back on the original spreadsheet, click somewhere in the data source, go to insert, click on table. Make sure the range is correct so that it still does not include these last three records, which is what I want right now. The data source has been changed to a table and that's what the pivot table is using. It still has the word revenue of $5,000, which is correct. Okay. Let's return to the data source, cut and paste these last three word courses to the next rows in the table. So the total word revenue is now 14,300. The new rows are automatically added to the table. Since the pivot table is using a table for the data source, all we have to do is click on refresh and we see the updated word revenue of 14,300. When I work with pivot tables, I am always checking the totals against the data source just to make sure that everything is correct. To summarize what we learned in this video, to create a pivot table, you can start with a table or with a regular spreadsheet and go to insert pivot table. In the right hand panel, you can add fields to the columns, rows, and values. To change how this data is formatted and summarized, there are drop down menus for the values field and for the column and row headers. But most of the time, it's just easier to use the right mouse click and use that menu. The pivot table analyze ribbon is where you find the buttons for refresh and change data source. The design ribbon is where you change the report layout and add subtotals and so on. The one thing we did not talk about is the filters area on the right hand panel. And I will cover that in the next video, filters and slicers. If you have any questions about this video, please let me know in the comments. I hope this was helpful.